Welcome back. Today's story is Bicycling Rules of the Road. The Adventures of Devin Van Dyke. Written by Kelly Pulley. It's a beautiful morning, said Devin Van Dyke. My chores are all done. May I ride on my bike? Yes, of course, called his mom as he darted outside. But follow the rules of the road as you ride. And he did. Devin followed the rules for a while. But then Betsy, La Belly, with a wave and a smile, called out, Please, will you give me a ride on your bike? Let me ride on your bike with you, Devin Van Dyke. Devin knew it was wrong, and he knew that he shouldn't. And he tried to remember the rules, but he couldn't. Betsy smiled, and she waved, and he simply forgot all the things he should do and the things he should not. Now with Betsy between Devin's hands on the bars, he swayed down the street, barely missing parked cars. It was harder to steer with her sitting up there, and his view had been blocked thanks to Betsy's long hair. Still, he rode down the street for a block, maybe three, until Betsy called out. There's a cat up that tree. It looks like it's lost. We should get it and see. So he stopped at the tree and he rescued the cat. Devin thought it might scratch him wherever it sat. So he took off the helmet that covered his head and he carried the cat in the helmet instead. Now he rolled down the street for a block, maybe eight until someone called out. Can you help us? We're late. On the curb stood the basketball team from his school. Devin wanted to help. All the guys were so cool. But the basketball players had nowhere to sit, even heat really high. All the guys barely fit. So like circus performers performing a show, they balanced above, Devin pedaled below. He weaved down the street for a block, maybe four, till the team pleaded. Please, Please would you, would you stop, stop for one more? more? So he stopped, and the team fetched their mascot, a goat. But the goat they soon found had a frog in his throat. When the guys placed the goat on the rack in the rear, the goat began hacking in Devin's right ear. He swayed down the street for a block, maybe nine. Until now, you might say he'd been doing just fine. But his view remained blocked thanks to Betsy's long hair. It was still hard to steer with her sitting up there. His helmet no longer on the top of his head. The cat had climbed up and now sat there instead. The basketball team teetered this way and that, which unbalanced the bike and unsettled the cat. And though everyone shouted which way he should steer, all that Devin could hear were the hacks in his ear. So, with no way of knowing which way he was going, or hearing, or stopping, or steering, or slowing, Devin ran through a stoplight, then ran out of luck. He sideswiped a car and he bounced off a truck. The truck lost its cargo of 408 cardboard cartons of worms bound for Bubba's fish bait. The cartons all smashed with 408 squishies, which freed all the worms from their feet. With the fishes, a wave of wet worms hit the basketball players who fell like a slimy worm sandwich in layers. While the cat from the tree and the goat with the hack both plopped down with a squish on the top of the stack. Poor Betsy came down with her head pointed south and was left with a terrible taste in her mouth. Devin flew for what seemed like a mile, maybe less. Then he landed curb flop in the squishy, squashy mess. 
He just sat in the road and rubbed his sore head where his helmet should be. Bumps were growing instead. His lesson was learned. Devin felt like a fool. He said, starting today, I'll obey every rule. Now he follows them all. And friends, you'd better too, cause a mouthful of worms isn't easy to chew. If you enjoyed today's story, please hit the like button. Thank you for clicking on Size Reading Time. Please like and subscribe. And make sure to hit the bell to turn on your notifications. That lets you know every time I upload. Thank you.